Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, a very late afternoon, and welcome to our press conference. This press conference follows the first day of the informal meeting of the European Employment and Social Affairs Ministers. And first, I have a housekeeping point in case you require interpretation. There are headsets ava available next to the entrance on my left. But back to the business at hand, uh, to give you an overview of the two days here in Tallinn, we have with us today two members of the Estonian government, uh, Kaja Iva, uh, Minister for Social Protection, and Evgenio Sinovsky, Minister for Health and Labour. And we're also delighted to have Commissioner Tyson with us here today. So without further ado, Minister Iva, please. Tere õhtust, kõigile. Mul on hea meel, et saame täna ja homme kollegi Evgenio Sinovskiga vedada arutelusid töö- ja pereelu ühitamise teemadel. Head lahendused tõiste ja perekondlike ülesannete kombineerimisel on võtti selleks, et lahendada Euroopa ees seisväid väljakutseid. Kogu Euroopas vananeb elanikkond, tööalist elanikkond, tööaliste inimeste ulk väheneb ja sündimus on madal. Samas me aga ju ootame tööalistel inimestelt, et nad samal ajal panustaksid majandusse, looksid pere ja hooldaksid ka abivajavaid perekonna liikmeid. Meie tänase ja omse kohtumise teema töö- ja pereelu ühitamine on see ka vajalik nii perede heaolu kui majandust ja sotsiaal kindlustussüsteemide jätkusuutlikust silmas pidades. Tänane arutelu näitas, et nii nagu muutuvad töötegemise viisid ja täienevad perevormid, on vaja erinevad ja painlike lahendusi ka töö- ja perelu ühitamiseks. Näiteks vanema puhkuste ja hüvitiste süsteemi puhul on vaja arvestada ka kärkperede, üksik vanemate ja hooldusõigust jagavate vanematega. Samuti nagu lapsehoiusüsteemi arendamisel peame silmas pidama ebatraditsioonilistel aegadel töötavate vanemate vajadusi. Eri riikide kogemused näitavad, et vajadus lähedaste hooldamise järele puudutab järjest laiemat elanike ringi. Ja peame laste kõrval rohkem tähelepanu pöörama ka puudega või eakat sugulast või lähedast hooldavate inimestega. Täna oli arutelude keskmes paljuski see, kuidas toetada naiste osalust tööturul. Homme sovime keskenduda hoolduskoormuse jagamise teemadele, nii et kuidas siis jagada hoolduskoormus naiste ja meeste vahel ning keskendume meeste rollile kodustes ja perekondlikes ülesannetes. Ning homme meil ka suurepärane võimalus kuulata paneelarutelu, kus on esindatud omale ekspertid nii vaba era kui avalikus sektorist. Ning meil on homme ka rõõm tutvustada ühte Eestis välja töötatud innovaatilist IT-lahendust meis hoolduskoormuse vähendamisele kaasa aitab. Ning loodan, et võimalus vahetada riikide vahe läid praktikaid ja häid kogemusi ja kuulata arvamusi nii ekspertidelt kui tööandjate ja ametühingute esindajatelt innustab meid looma neid uusi lahendusi, mis aitavad kaasa eelpool kõneldud väljakutsetelt. Aitäh! Thank you, Minister. Minister Sinovski. Uh, good evening. Uh, first of all, I'm proud to say that together with uh, Bulgaria and Austria, we have just signed the presidency trio declaration on equality between men and women. Uh, we have uh, set the tone, actually already starting uh, with uh, this informal EBSCO held here today and tomorrow, uh, for the next uh, 18 months on how to proceed in order to achieve uh, uh, quicker positive change in the area of, of gender equality. The presidency trio underlines the need to place gender equality high on the EU's agenda. I would say that uh, put it back there where it, where it really belongs. Uh, and we, we have agreed on, on, on common actions and concrete uh, steps that we will take in order to, to do so. Uh, Work-life balance, of course, in this context, is, is, uh, uh, feeds in quite nicely into, into the gender equality uh, priority that, that I just uh, mentioned. And uh, here, uh, work-life balance uh, means finding balance not only between work and private life, but also between the needs of employees and possibilities 
of the employers. It's natural that uh, while the employees need more work-life flexibility and support when caring for their uh, dependent family members, uh, employers also have to find ways to remain competitive. And that's why we need to find solutions that both sides uh, benefit from, which is, uh, uh, of course, possible. That's the whole goal of it. It's, it's a win-win situation, not a win-lose situation. But clearly, the discussions on, on these topics are, are uh, uh, in order and, of course, uh, have, uh, as also uh, we, we saw today, have uh, rather different ways of, of or approaches from, from different stakeholders. Uh, today we also heard many uh, good examples about uh, uh, measures for reconciling work and private life uh, that can also provide uh, benefits for the employers, uh, family-friendly employers. Uh, it's, it's been shown by in many in many countries are often more successful in attracting uh, in attracting a talented and motivated workforce, and uh, they experience less uh, staff turnover. Uh, the ways of living and working, of course, are constantly evolving. And so uh, we, that is our societies, our social systems, our countries, uh, our union, we must keep up with uh, these uh, changes. Our current uh, work-life measures uh, mainly and primarily address uh, standard working models. At the same time, we know that, that due to technological change, the, the patterns of work are changing, the, the, the labor uh, relations are changing, the working environments are changing. We have um, uh, much more people working under open-ended employment contracts, uh, work for different employers, working part-time, are self-employed, and so on. Uh, we clearly need, and this is only a trend that, that is uh, beginning to kick in, and, and clearly we need to uh, look already today how do we adjust our, our uh, current systems to uh, benefit people in, in this uh, newer types of, 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 of work. Uh, at the same time, of course, as was already mentioned by the colleague, uh, we have a, a growing diversity of different uh, family types and family arrangements. And clearly here again, uh, these, our, our systems our social protection network has to keep pace with the, with the social developments. And uh, having comprehensive uh, debates um, and sharing good practices between European countries reminds us how different uh, the needs of the people and ways of supporting them are. And uh, it also shows, and today showed it very nicely, that we all have uh, rather similar challenges and uh, of, of finding uh, good balance between work and, and, and private life. And not, not a single country has figured it out altogether for the you know, next 50 years or something like that, how to do it. It wouldn't be possible anyway. And in this regard, uh, uh, sharing experience, also sharing negative experience of what not to do is clearly uh, beneficial for us all in order to to um, uh, assure that our, our systems uh, at the same time provide adequate social protection and uh, also contribute to higher employment rates and longer and happier uh, working lives. And having the uh, European Commission's draft directive uh, in the background, of course, there is no better moment uh, for these uh, political discussions that we are having uh, here now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Commissioner, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let me first uh, thank the Estonian Presidency, the Minister Sosinovsky and uh, Minister uh, Iva Kaya, for hosting us today here uh, with uh, all the uh, Ministers of Employment and Social Affairs, together with uh, social partners, representatives, and people from the civil society. And I must say I look forward to working together in the next few months to book progress on our uh, European files. I welcome that the Estonian Presidency uh, dedicated our meeting of today and tomorrow to work-life balance. It is a topic that concerns all of us. In the 21st century, women still remain underrepresented in the labor force, despite the fact that 65% of all graduates today are women, both in full-time and part-time work, the employment rate of women is much lower than that of men. Having caring responsibilities for children 
or dependent family members appears to be an important driver for these differences. Women still take up the majority of caring responsibilities, thereby reducing their income and their pension prospects. Men, on the other hand, they tend to increase their working hours after having children. They often take on the earning burden, while women take on the caring burden. Indeed, the design of work-life balance policies in many member states is still discouraging them from taking leave. This is not only unfair in the context of an aging society, it is also bad for the economy. The economic loss due to the gap of employment rates between men and women is estimated to be around 370 billion euro. Business also lose out when they have to replace highly skilled female workers, uh, and uh, we estimate that, uh, or it is estimated that such replacement costs can go up to uh, 20,000 euro per worker. Addressing, so addressing the current imbalances in work and family caring duties is also an economic imperative. Member states, that's what we see. Member states with the best performing work-life balance policies do better in these terms. Now, with our work-life balance initiative, we want to give citizens the flexibility and the choice to balance their work and family responsibilities fairly. By promoting better work-life balance, we will help to drive upward convergence, increase social fairness, and improve our competitiveness. This is why this initiative is essential, an essential deliverable for the European pillar of social rights. And here we all need to work together. Member states, European level, also social partners and civil society. And I hope that with the help of the Estonian presidency, the negotiations on our work-life balance package will significantly advance over the coming months. And I would like to, thank, uh, to take this opportunity also to thank the trio of uh, presidencies for their commitment uh, to gender equality as reflected in today's joint trio declaration, because indeed um, gender equality is about values and equality between men and women was already a value that was enshrined in the treaty when we started in 57 with one article about equal pay for equal work and we used it as a hook to develop many, many directives on equal opportunities and we just have to continue because as the minister just said, times are changing, the way of work and living and society is changing and we have to adapt our, uh, our institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. We will now move on to questions. So please introduce yourself and the media you represent and please also indicate to whom your question is addressed to. Laurie, go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Lauri Tankler. I'm with the Estonian uh, uh, daily newspaper Eesti Päevalet and Delphi News Portal. Um, I have a question to both uh, Minister Vashinovsky and uh, the Commissioner. Um, and the question is about the same, the same um, thing. You talked about how businesses would actually uh, benefit from this work-life balance thing. And it's not a uh, win-lose situation, it's a win-win situation. Um, in, in a lot of countries, this, this proposition to, to, be, to compensate uh, uh, parental leave or, or paternity leave, uh, maternity leave and something like that, it's going to hit businesses pretty hard. How do, you, how do um, both of you see this in different member states where we in Estonia, we have this, uh, this uh, shared uh, through taxes, but in a lot of different member states, they may actually uh, burden the businesses a whole lot. How do you see the competitiveness question uh, compared to, for example, them moving from Europe to, I don't know, the United States, where they do not mandate such things? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, first of all, I think, uh, first of all, when we have uh, this kind of paternity leave, maternity leave, and all this. I think that's my personal opinion because it's not organized at European level, but that there should be a compensation. So far, we have no rules on this. What we propose in our work-life balance package is that for uh, um, parental leave, that it should be compensated uh, at the level of sick pay level. 
member states, the ministers will have to decide together with the European Parliament what should be the level and whether it really uh, should be compensated, whether they decide that together at European level. But if you ask me who has to pay this, then, but this is my personal opinion, because it's up to member states to see how they, they organize this uh, security system, let me say. Uh, but I think that this should be something that you mutualize. This is not a, such a thing that has to be only on the shoulders of, of the employers uh, that have to miss and replace certain persons and to compensate while they are away. I think this should be mutualized. This is more fair. On the other hand, in general, uh, is this raising the cost uh, for employment? In the short run, you could say yes, because you have to compensate. But in the long run, we have to see what are the problems. And we go to, with the demographic change we have and the raising uh, demographic dependency rate ratio, we, we see that uh, we will have a shortage on the labor market. So we must have all uh, people that are available to work. We, must them, we need them on the labor market. Uh, this is good for the economy, this is good for the enterprises that are already sometimes complaining now that they don't find the right skilled people, that they don't find people at all. So having them available for the labor market, having qualified people available, uh, I think this is also in the interest of, uh, of the employers. And smart employers see that and they treat their uh, employees very well to attract them and to keep them and not to lose them. They prefer to let them go for a while when they need really uh, some leave or some flexibility to combine uh, work uh, duties and uh, family duties uh, to give them some flexibility rather than seeing them uh, leaving the company and starting up all over again with somebody else or not finding anybody every month. Oh, now I have almost nothing to add, uh, but um, uh, to repeat some of the uh, thoughts that the Commissioner already expressed. Uh, first of all, uh, work-life balance has uh, different aspects to it. There is a, a clearly a labor market and uh, employment and business side to it, but there is a social aspect to it, which is uh, of course linked to uh, sharing the care burden for either the next generation or the previous generation. And, and clearly uh, uh, it's an important aspect of it. And thirdly, of course, it's a question of values, uh, value of gender equality. And since it is not only linked to the uh, you know, core uh, function of uh, enterprise, of business, then, for that reason, this cost has to be uh, to a, a significant amount uh, socialized because it, it also, uh, these costs basically uh, help further uh, different um, uh, social uh, goals and uh, our value commitments that, that we have as societies, which uh, I think would be unfair in this regard that the business would have to carry all of it. Uh, if we narrow it down, then I think if we look at the interest of, 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 of business on this side, then, then it's, it's a question mostly of short term versus long term. Mm -hmm. In the short, ter short term, one can say that, of course, you know, it, it raises labor costs, but in the, in the longer term, uh, uh, one aspect was mentioned by the Commissioner earlier, uh, losing uh, talented uh, young women who, who fall out of the labor market if the provision of, of life work, uh, um, uh, work life balance is not sufficient. It's a loss of talent uh, for, for the employers themselves. So if there is no flexible uh, work life support system, uh, then you will lose them from the labor market, which has happened in history of Europe and is still happening in many of our member states uh, today. Well, to some extent, it's happening in all member states still, in, in some more than, than in others. And second, uh, again, as the Commissioner mentioned, is, but in Estonia it's of course much more uh, acute, and we know it very well, is, is the question of labour markets uh, participation in the, in the situation of uh, quickly shrinking labour pool. So if we have in the next 15 years, we have the labour pool uh, shrinking by about a, by about a fifth then we need really in the interests of, of, of business, and they have expressed it here in Estonia quite, quite uh, strongly, that we need to put lots of efforts in order to bring as many people as possible back on the labor market who are there because of uh, away from the labor market due to uh, caring for their loved ones, uh, due to disabilities, whatever other uh, constraints they may have. So, so if we look at the, at the long term, then, then clearly it is a win-win. Thank you. Anyone else? 
I see that our speakers have been so comprehensive that there are no more questions. Yes, you can. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, just to follow up, uh, is this the socialized versus the, the burden bearing? Was this one of the bigger questions that was being discussed uh, uh, in this question of, of, uh, of work-life balance between the member states? Uh, was this what was uh, the bigger uh, question? Who bears the burden? Social, uh, mutualized, socialized, or, or uh, particular businesses themselves? Thank you. That's clearly one of the of the topics that that is uh, is uh, to some extent controversial. I wouldn't say that in terms of aims there is any difference uh, between social partners between Business Europe and, and and the Trade Union Confederation. I wouldn't say so, but but of course, uh, as it always is with details, um, there is uh, there is a, a difference on opinion sometimes. Uh, but I don't think that there is anything uh, to that we couldn't overcome in the in the coming months and, uh, of, of, of discussing it. There is, of course, a second issue that, uh, that has been raised by only a couple of, of member states, and, but, but, but still the, the issue is there, the issue of subsidiarity. So to what extent, one could say from a legal perspective, is, does the European Union have the right to legislate on, on these topics? Uh, I here agree with the European Commission that, that yes, they do in, in this framework, that we don't see a problem here. Um, uh, but of course, we take uh, um, uh, you know, problems of, of member states with that uh, clearly seriously. But the second one is, is more, more practical. Um, uh, do we actually need a European approach to that in a situation where many member states have actually already legislated to, to, to some extent on, on, on those issues? And here again, I, I, I still think that, that it is, of course, a rather fundamental debate on, 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 uh, on to what extent does the European Union want to move into the uh, sort of social uh, harmonization of social uh, life in, 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 uh, on the Union level. It's a fundamental debate and, and of course, uh, uh, um, has to be looked at uh, in the context of the uh, pillar of social rights that was... Uh, uh, again, uh, put forward by the Commission a couple of months ago, where we see that that, uh, uh, that there is a, a, uh, a, a need to actually agree on common social principles, values, uh, in, in many different social spheres that we have, in order to move forward uh, with with the uh, with the free free movement of labour, with with single markets, uh, but also to in the long run uh, provide more upward convergence and therefore competitiveness of the union. And of course, very important in the context of, 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 of changing uh, economies and societies. So, uh, digital economy that, that is emerging and, and, and impacting all our societies uh, in a very quick pace uh, clearly has a very strong disruptive moment to it, uh, to, the, to the societies. But this is not a, a reason for pessimism, so let's be afraid of it, let's close the borders. Uh, rather, uh, one has to do both at the same time. We have to be very energetic about innovation and technical, technological development and at the same time foresee the social changes that occur together with it and address them. And here I think that, in, especially in this context, the, the initiative of, of the social pillar is, is, is very important and uh, work-life balance is a sort of one concrete legislative file within it as a, as a concrete example of that. Commissioner, would you? Yes, if I may add something, I totally agree what uh, just has been said. Let me start with saying that. Um, but if you allow me just uh, to go back to the, the very short history, let me say, but uh, in the last mandate of, uh, of European Parliament and the European Commission, 2009-2014, there was a proposal uh, presented, launched by our predecessor, uh, decessors on uh, an uh, amendment on the maternity leave direction. So it was just about mothers and it was about take, uh, taking care, caretaking of children. And this was pending there since years and years and years. And when this commission arrived, we said old pending uh, proposals, we get rid of it because it means that it has no, uh, there is no way out. So we have to look at it, re, uh, look at them, we have to do a review and see what we can do better or, or to just withdraw. 
then we plan to withdraw that proposal, pending and leading to nowhere or to nothing. And we made an agreement with the Parliament. So also on the request of the European Parliament, they said, okay, to, with the withdrawal, but you have to come with something better. So we said, okay, we will see, we don't withdraw it without having something in place. And our in place was that we said we have to go beyond children. It's not only about care for children, it's also care for other dependent relatives. And we want to go beyond mothers. There is also a role for fathers. And having said that, we said we don't touch on maternity leave, but we look at what we also had in place already, an old, rather old directive on parental leave. So we said we look at that and we will see whether we have to change that. We first asked social partners, they were not ready to negotiate and to come to an uh, autonomous uh, bilateral agreement, a collective agreement. So we took our responsibility and we, uh, we formulated our proposal. Now, why to do it at European level? Because le legislation was already there. So if we think this is not uh, adapted anymore to the situation of today, then we have to change also our European legislation. Hmm? Uh, on the compensation, why did we came now with a proposal to compensate the parental leave and the paternity leave? Paternity leave, what we also added, uh, this was not foreseen in the existing legislation because if we look at the studies we have, it's very clear that if a leave is not compensated, then men don't take it up. And that's why I say we see that the earning burden is on the men and the caring burden is on the shoulders of the women. And we need them both on the labor market. We have a shortage on the labor market. It's coming up. It's becoming... Uh, uh, stronger and stronger, so we have to, to see that both can participate in the labor market, but that also both men and women can take their care duties, because that's also something we learn when we look at studies and when we listen carefully to men. There is a wish also for, for them to, to, to be able to take some of this care burden on their shoulders. But we have to change the mentality a little bit for that, and by proposing this, we help that. Thank I should you. have realized that in Estonia I need to allow uh, more time for people to gather their courage to pose a question. So I will try not to be hasty this time and to make entirely sure that we have exhausted all the questions. But this seems to be the case. So thank you, Ministers. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you all for coming. This thank concludes you. our press conference. Thank you. Thank you.